Thank you for being part of the Oakwood Free Will Baptist Church Ministries. Our prayer is that those who listen to the Word of God will find a greater revelation of God's purpose in their lives. For additional resources, please visit us on the web at www.oakwoodfwb.com. Today, may you be encouraged, strengthened, and refreshed by our message. Uh, you and I would not be where we are had we not been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. And uh, I'm so thankful for that this morning. Um, I had someone ask me the other day, Brother Dwayne, sometimes I see you down front and you're just, your head's bowed, your eyes are closed, and it's right before the message or it's even during the singing or something. They said, what's going on? And uh, I said, well, here, here's what it is. I am praying, number one, that God would help me uh, as I preach his word. But I said, I'm praying also that I don't see you, I see Jesus. Because that's who I want, I'm accountable to, and that's who I want to see as I'm preaching. I don't want to look out and see somebody going like this and focus on that, or someone doing like this. What's he talking about, you know? Or someone looking at you like, which sometimes that happens. And it's very distracting. And so I pray, God, help me to focus on you and not on anything in here. Um, I'm responsible for preaching his word. You're responsible for how you respond. And uh, so that's, that's, what I'm, that's what's going on down there. Just wanted to let everybody know in case you're wondering. Um, if you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, I, um, I really felt the Lord leading me in this. I know this is Labor Day and we've been focusing on uh, working for the Lord and those are, those are good things. And part of that is in this message. Um, but the title that I uh, put for the message this morning, whether it's the title that needs to be the title or not, but it's, this is the direction that I'm going. It's simply this, a little faith can move mountains. A little faith can move mountains. By the way, this faith is not just for you. This faith is for others to see. That's part of the message this morning. You see, the faith that we have, ever how weak it is, it is good for you, but it's also good for that neighbor down the road or that friend to see God working in you. Okay? So Daniel chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. I'm going to read the whole chapter. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. By the way, when people move up in prominence, it makes other people jealous. That's what happened here. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then, these men, then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said, Thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. That is, we are bowing to you, O king. You are great. You are wonderful. You are awesome. High five. That kind of stuff. Building up his ego. All the presidents, verse 7, of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute. And to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did a time. That is, it's not something new. Daniel always did this, and he's still going to continue to do this. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. 
Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man shall, that shall ask a petition of God or any man within thirty days, save thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which offereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth thee not, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Notice they didn't say a lion's den. There could have not been lions in there. A den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, and that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went into his palace, and he passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came into the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the den of lions, or from the lions. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths that they have not heard me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found on him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwelt in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree. By the way, this decree not does not change. I make this decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Let's pray. Father, it is so good to be in your house. Lord, as I think of all this week has entailed and involved, Lord, there, there has been so many things going on from the hectic day-to-day -day life to um, the pains of a loved one that has been sick, or to the spiritual warfare in our, all of our lives that, go, that has been going on all throughout the week. And Lord, we recognize this morning that you are God, that you are great. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are that one that our faith and our trust is in. And Lord, we know that our faith and trust in you is not in vain, just as Daniel's trust in you was not in vain. Lord, I pray this morning that you would help us to focus on your word. Lord, I pray that the things that are said this morning out of my mouth would be acceptable to you. God, I pray that anything that I have on my mind that is not of you, that you would push that aside. And God, that everything that's said this morning would come from you. And God, we pray that you would uh, bless during this service. I pray, God, that if there is one under the sound of my voice that does not know Jesus, 
that today would be the day of their salvation. And Lord, for so many of us who struggle with faith, we may just have a little bit, but a little bit does a lot, according to what your word says. If we've got the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, mountains can be moved. And Lord, for the mountains in some folks' lives this morning that is under the sound of my voice, Lord, would you help them to have that little faith so that this mountain that, that is in front of them can be removed. Lord, we pray your blessings on the reading of your word to our hearts. And God, we pray that you would be honored and glorified, not just as the word of God goes forth, but as we respond to your word. Lord, I'm simply a messenger. Lord, it's your spirit that speaks. It's your word that speaks. It's our responsibility to not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer. So God, help us to be a doer today. Help us to, to have that little faith. Lord, help us not only to have it so that it will be a blessing to us, but that it will be a blessing to those around us. We commit ourselves to you now. Bless this, this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love a song. I actually shared this song this week uh, with uh, Dan and Jennifer as they were going through this trial with their son. And it's one that God placed on my heart. I was praying. I shared this with them earlier this week. I was praying for Justin. And I, folks, I'm telling you, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And on my knees and driving down the road with my eyes open and wherever I was, I was praying. And as I was praying at one point, God placed this song on my mind. And I know you guys, if you listen to 88.3 or other Christian radio stations, you've heard this multiple times a day. I hear it at least three or four times a day as I'm tra traveling back and forth. But it says this. I want you to listen to these words. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing bad. I've stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. But right now, oh right now, I just can't. It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you can. Save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. They say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing a little faith is all I have right now. But God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, give me the strength to be able to sing, it is well with my soul. I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand, but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow, I know the hurt would all go away if you just say the word, but even if you don't, my hope is in you alone. You've been faithful, you've been good all my days. Jesus, I will cling to you, come what may, because I know you're able, I know you can. I know you're able, I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand, but even if you don't, my hope is in you alone. Just a little bit of faith. I know as we think about Daniel this morning, Daniel had a pretty big obstacle in front of him. Daniel had faith in the Lord, though. His faith in the Lord was not in vain. You see, sometimes we feel like that there's something so huge in front of us when if we just saw how big our God is, it wouldn't seem so big, would it? If we would recognize how great and awesome and wonderful and powerful the Lord is, those things in our lives that we think are unmovable and those mountains that we think are too big to climb over, God is with us every step of the way. This was a mountain for Daniel, at least in some people's eyes it was. You know, Daniel could have very easily said, okay, king, you've made this decree and... Therefore, I'm not going to pray to my God. I'm not going to do what I normally do because you may disagree. You see, Daniel recognized, you know, this may be a mountain, this may be a hurdle, but you know what? I'm just going to walk right over it anyway because God's more important than the king. By the way, if our laws of our day ever conflict with God's law, we've got to follow Him. 
We do. No matter what the cost, we've got to follow what God says. I am not um, telling you to go out and disobey laws, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But if those laws do not go along with what the Word of God says or what the Lord expects of us, then we need to go with what God says. That's what I'm saying. And that's what Daniel did. Daniel literally never skipped a beat. He went right along doing exactly what he always did, praying three times a day toward Jerusalem. You know, it's interesting that these fellas, these leaders that have been put in power by the king, that they tried everything they could to find something against Daniel. They couldn't find anything. That, I'll tell you what, folks, that in and of itself is commendable. That they could not find anything, any fault in this man. The only thing they could do was trick the king into making a decree, which they knew the king wouldn't make ordinarily because the king loved Daniel. They had to trick him into making this decree. And how did they do it? You are the man, king. You are the one in charge. You are the one that everybody looks to, building up that pride. And when they did that, he was susceptible, susceptible to that pride and therefore made a, a bad choice. As a young man, Daniel was separated. Daniel chapter 1. The Bible talks about that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat or the wine which he drank. You see, way back when, when Daniel was young, he purposed in his heart. He made a, um, a choice in his life that he's going to follow what God says no matter what. By the way, young people, I would encourage you, if you've never made that choice, number one, to follow Jesus, but number two, to say, you know what, God, no matter what you want with my life, I'm going to do it. No matter what the consequences. You see, it has to happen generally when you're young. If you make decisions when you're young, you follow those decisions all throughout your life. It's important that you purpose in your heart to do God's will, no matter what the consequences. Daniel separated himself to God when he was young. When he was in the middle of his life, in Daniel chapter 5, we see that Daniel was sold out to God, and even as an older man, in Daniel chapter 6, he was surrendered to whatever God's will was, no matter what that involved. If it involved going into a, lion's, a den of lions, then that's fine. Hey, God, man, I'm yours, no matter what the situation is. Hey, in the good times and the bad, I am yours. So no matter what the situation and no matter what's going to happen, I'm going to follow what you want. No matter what mountain is in front of me, I'm going to follow what you want. Folks, that takes faith. It takes faith. So when we think about Daniel, Daniel had a consistent faith. Daniel did not say with his mouth, God, I love you and I want to serve you and then with everything else, did something that would not be consistent with that. Daniel was consistent in his faith. You know, think about this. When you think about the Christian life, number one, you've got to start the race right. You've got to start it with Jesus. But you've also got to finish. You've got to finish the race that we're in. It takes faith to do that. Think about these, these mountains that Daniel, um, or the mountain that Daniel came in, in contact with in this passage. I want you to look at a couple of things with me, and that is, it, there is the mountain of testing. Daniel was tested. You see, there are several things I want you to understand this morning, that number one, God allows things to happen in your life. He allows things to happen for your good. Daniel was already a great man of God. We know that from the scripture. We know from early on in his life when he was taken captive and he was brought in and the king said, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. Even changing their names and so forth. Daniel took a stand. He was already a wonderful man of God. But even through this, God's purpose for Daniel was that he become a better servant of God. See, sometimes we look at mountains, we look at trials, we look at troubles, probably in the wrong way. We want to question, God, why? Why, God, did you let this happen? Why, God, did you allow this to happen? By the way, we know that there are things in life that happen just because it's a result of sin. We live in a sin-cursed world, therefore bad things are going to happen. 
But I'm going to tell you, sometimes God allows things to happen so that you draw closer to Him. But also, God allows things to happen so that He can be glorified. Amen. You see, when you face trials and troubles, God knows deep down how you're going to respond. And as you respond the way God wants you to respond, it brings Him glory and Him honor. Amen. But it does something else. It helps point others to Jesus. Isn't that good? It, not only is it going to help you, not only does it bring glory to God, but it's also going to help everyone else to be pointed toward that same Lord that you love so very much. Why is it sometimes that we want to question. I think it's because we're human. I think it's because we battle this sin versus the spirit, this flesh versus the spirit. We battle it all the time. And sometimes we give in to the flesh rather than yield to the spirit. And when we do that, you think about what we're doing. Number one, we're not recognizing what God wants to accomplish in our lives by taking us, by sometimes removing the mountain, but sometimes taking us over the mountain. We don't understand sometimes that how God can be glorified in this because of our response. And we don't respond the way God wants us to. It doesn't bring Him glory. And it's not going to point anyone else to Jesus. Man, think about what God did with Daniel in this trial. This mountain that was put in front of Daniel. Think about what it did for those around him. I'll tell you what it did. The king made another decree and said, hey, this is the God we need to worship. This is the God that we need to serve. He made a difference in his whole kingdom just by standing up and doing what was right, by responding the way that God wanted him to respond. What does it take to get you to back down? What does it take to get you not to do what God wants you to do? Folks, I want to tell you, it takes just a little bit of faith to move forward and not to move backward, to move forward in your faith. A little faith produces more than words. It produces action. I've had um, talked with some folks about this very subject before. Brother Eric alluded to this earlier. We're not saved by works. But folks, our faith produces works. Our faith produces action, right? That's what it is. So that little faith that we have, it produces action. It's not just words. It's not something that we just say we are. We show people by the way we live our lives. Daniel proved his faith by taking action, by continuing to pray three times a day. When you look in verses 10 and 11 of chapter 6 of Daniel, we see that Daniel was a witness to his enemies. Daniel did not change his mind about praying. Just because the king made a decree, Daniel didn't say, oh, well, i got to do what the king says. Daniel knew there was something more important than that. That is doing what God says. He remained consistent in his faith even in spite of the consequences. Even in the pressure to conform to what the king had said, to conform to what society had mandated to him. He didn't do that. He followed what God said. And it was a witness to his enemies. When you look at verses 14 through 20, we find out that it was an encouragement to others. Daniel's faith made an impact on the king and made an impact on the kingdom. And isn't that what God calls us to do? We're not to cower down in a lack of faith. We are to engage our culture because we've got faith in God. Folks, we have got, we worship and serve the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. We shouldn't be ashamed of anything. If anything else, everybody else should be ashamed. But we have got something, I don't want to say this in the wrong way, we've got something to be thankful for and to be proud of that we serve King Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Not that we're any better than anybody else, but we serve a great and mighty God. Yeah. And we've got to learn that taking action, faith is more than words, it's taking action and it's in, in doing that, we are a witness to those who even we may call our enemies, but also an encouragement to those who are around us to serve God and to love God. And then you look in verse 10. That faith allows us to stay the course. See, Daniel, God had a plan for Daniel. 
And I'm going to tell you, folks, it doesn't matter if you look at the first part of the book of Daniel, in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, when he purposed in his heart, or you look in Daniel chapter 6, when he still, as an older man, still standing for God. Daniel stayed his course. He never backed down. Didn't matter what was going to happen to him, he never backed down. He continued in this walk of faith. But then we see, number three, that a little faith will end in victory. Now we know as believers, Christ has already won. Right? We still have battles in this life because we battle the flesh, but ultimately the victory has already won. A little faith will end in victory. Victory over this mountain that's in front of you, this trial. See, Daniel's faith, no matter if it was the den of lions, or whatever it was, God gave Daniel victory. His faith carried him through. His faith never, ever wavered. Do you ever find your faith wavering? Do you ever find yourself saying, God, why? You know, God already knows the question before you ask it. He knows you're going to ask the question. And you already know what the answer is. But sometimes our lack of faith, we want to question anyway. But God, with a little faith, with this faith, He allows things to end in victory. Victory over the trial, over the mountain. Victory even over the enemy. What happened to those who accused Daniel? What happened to those who caused the king to make this decree? What happened to them? Yeah, see, that's a weird one. That's true. It didn't end so well for them, did it? It ended in death, not just for them, but for, for their family. See, sin has consequences. But Daniel won the victory. And folks, I'm telling you, you read 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. A little bit of faith. It's unbelievable what it will accomplish as you walk this life for the Lord. Where are you at this morning? Do you have faith? Do you have even a little bit of faith? Are you confident in your God? The God of Daniel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the heroes of the faith in the Bible. Do you really trust Him today? If you trust the Lord, it not only will make a difference in your life, but it will make a difference in all those around you. You know, when I think about the fact that we are saved by grace through faith and that out of ourselves, it is the gift of God. We read that this morning, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And you read another verse or two after that. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if we could work ourselves to heaven, we have something to boast about. But we don't. Because it's all Jesus. It's all about Him. It's all what He did for us. But folks, we've got a part in that. We have to say yes to Jesus. Those who do not know Him, you have to say yes to Him. Have you done that? And then those of us who do know Him, this life of faith is that. It is a faith. But that faith ought to produce something. That faith ought to produce you doing what God wants you to do, no matter what the circumstances. And I want to ask you this morning, how is your faith? Are you struggling right now with it? This message was for all of us today. And it was for this time and this place this season for a reason. Don't allow Satan to get a foothold and to make you doubt about things in this life. And folks, he's out there and he's fighting. He is fighting you and me every day. He is telling us, you can't do this. You can't do that. Folks, he's already lost. Christ has won. And because Christ won, so are we. We're winners. And we need to remind the devil about that. Remind him where he's going. When he gets in our face, as Brother Tim say, when he gets in my grill, we need to remind him he's already lost. 
and my faith and my trust is of the Lord. Let's all stand and bow our heads and close our eyes. No one's looking around. was great